welcome guys to my YouTube debut. <laughs> let's see, let's see how this goes. Um, I had to set up a new stream. I hope um, some of you found their way here uh, from the old link because uh, the old link didn't work anymore because I had to um, start the whole stream new because I messed something up again tech and me isn't working very well so guys oh there's the cam that's the cam uh yeah um let's go for for uh my first youtube stream after a year a little bit, bit more than a year on twitch um i think it's time to move on to and try different platforms and uh see how uh yeah how it's it's going on new grounds um so let's try and see how many people will find their way into the stream today um and see how it all how it all goes and especially if the stream quality will be better than on twitch because i had uh, huge technical issues on twitch all the time um and yeah just i'm just happy to or i'm just curious to talk try new things and um test a couple a couple new ways to um provide you with content and stuff so uh, let's just see how it goes um and the cool thing i i guess with youtube is also that it will hopefully be easier to re-watch the streams for people who just can't be here at this point like for example um, viewers that are in different time zones and who, who are sleeping right now will be um, hopefully easier to be able to rewatch the stream here uh, because on Twitch it's possible but I think only up to two weeks after the stream and um, it's I also tried uploading the Twitch streams to YouTube um, which is possible but it is a little bit um, of a annoying process I would say so that's um, something I think could be uh, much cooler here on YouTube so let's just see how it goes I mean my my um, my content and what I will be doing today on stream is anyway it, it will be different from um, from my previous streams anyway so um, yeah as um, announced I am going to draw an isometric house today for my curious cabins collection um, and uh, this will be the tenth house I, I will be doing so um, I've, I've already done or I've already finished nine different houses and um, I think they're, they'll um, be some of them will be visible here in my um, art uh, a little window here where, where I present you my art <laughs> so um, yeah uh, the whole first drop of the collection of the curious cabins project will be 10 houses so this is the last one I gotta do now um, before uh, I can yeah release them this week on Thursday so if you have uh, any questions throughout the process so if you want to just no details about a certain step of the process or just um i don't know whatever you want to know just drop it in the comments i'm already i'm always happy to uh to answer comments and to answer questions to to discuss about um stuff art related or not uh whatever you want to talk about so just uh, don't be shy let me know um just a sip and then let's have a look at uh, what we're, we we have here. So the house I want to draw today, or I want to um, continue drawing today, as you see, there's already a sketch uh, that I've uh, made. Um, so this is some kind of industrial building, and I don't know if, if that's if you can if that's clear. It's a little bit the scribbles often do look a little bit cluttered, but uh, this is an industrial facade here uh, oops like um, here we have this facade and then mm, 
these windows i think it's a little bit could be like some some kind of british industrial art architecture and the special feature we have here is this nice uh, window or this glass front we have in here and we can see that there's um there's a pond and some vegetation inside the building so that's something i really love to combine uh, is mm, you're creating creating a combination or mixing architecture with nature with vegeta vegetation so it, i think that's um always something that is surprising and interesting to look at and that's um what i basically want to achieve with a lot of my artworks is just something that people enjoy looking at that is interesting and fascinating to to um uh, to dive into and um, one technique to achieve this is by combining and mixing different unusual parts you know creating unusual combinations so let's see um this is the the second more detailed scribble and this is here you see the my first scribble as you see it's, it's super rough uh, that's usually where i find my ideas or put my initial ideas to paper um to digital paper in that kind of case and we can just switch to the paper to the paper app which is my um kind of mood board scribbling taking notes app i use which is really cool uh called just paper by we transfer and uh here's two buildings i found on pinterest that i took as an inspiration as you see here the the front of this building here is actually um very similar to my drawing so because i just really like this front here of that building um also the roof um and then i i've combined it with uh this nice building probably photo from london or so i guess um somewhere in england i would say um that has these really cool uh windows this is window style that i love um i don't know if it's it's still victorian or is it if it's already the also some kind of industrialization architecture like early um early 20th century um i'm not sure about that i'm not such an architecture expert i just pick the details that i love uh and then combine them <laughs> so uh, it's, it's sometimes a little, little bit weird and wild but for me it works so yeah they, these are the initial scribbles i've done then uh after studying the photos and then i'm going to head over or oh, head it over to um making a more detailed scribble that i use for as as a guideline for the outlines now <clears throat> so i think i think we can just head over to the outlines here um, i'm using the tony montana brush it's a brush for my uh, own um, brush pack and tony montana is actually i think probably really my my most favorite brush ever from my own uh, brush pack um, and you see here we can use make use of the isometric grid which is great um, in procreate to use for these kind of drawings it's really a lot of help and um, cool thing about procreate's uh, brush brushes is that you can now here if you look on the left side here um, you see this little blue um, marker here and you can now set uh, favorite brush sizes. And that's something I really struggled with um, earlier to, to find the right brush size I used for a certain project. And now I, I saved this brush size for Tony Montana and can now uh, go back to that all the time without <laughs> having him to try out. Okay, okay, this is too thick. Okay, oh no, this is not thick enough. You now I can just go here. It's a nice new feature came uh, came with the last update uh, if i remember right um definitely helpful procreate is really good at adding features that make your life easier um for example like photoshop still does not have an isometric drawing grid and you have to set it 
set it up yourself still which is a it's a it's a pain in my uh, in my eyes and yeah Hey Jen, yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, it's it's kind of that that um, factory it has that factory vibe. I think like late nineteenth century kind of factory vibe. I think the photograph here I have here is I think it's Eastern Europe, if I remember right, from Pinterest. So it could be Poland or so, but I'm not sure. So this looks like something like a coal mine or so. So this probably uh, a building that was used as cold storage um i guess that's um yeah that's the vibes i i wanted to go for here um so first thing i do is usually when starting with the lines i mean you see there's kind of um there's there's a complexity to the whole drawing and um, something that I guess is that I think is, is difficult for me and I guess is difficult for other artists is to get a hold of this complexity um, to like where to start um, my my brush is behaving weirdly that we just um, just quitting procreate sometimes it's it's doing weird things. Um, just a second. Sorry for the break. So um, yeah, what I what I do to ease this um, this this feeling of like over overwhelming complexity is to start with these basic lines like I do now, and to fill in the very straight and, and simple and very clear lines and areas so because um, it will in the beginning look a little bit too stiff and too um, yeah you you may think that uh, there's not enough dynamic in the shapes and stuff like that but that comes later so it's completely fine to for now just um, add these very straight very geometric lines and the whole um, the, the, the whole yeah um, natural vibe will come later when when I'm going to add more more free shapes and that helps you to go step by step in these kind of drawings or at least it's for me <clears throat> for me it's that way so here I need um, these this round part of the uh, of the window let me just show you how I usually um, do that little trick so when you want to draw a circle and it's the surface of the house that faces to the left right you have oops you have kind of these boundaries that for example that the circle will have this is the middle point and the circle will be touching this 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 and this if you, if you look at the at the uh, grid lines so what you can do is uh, oops just draw a circle touching these points but procreate okay procreate is a little bit weird today again okay it's uh, it's let me just check if my brushes and my pen is has a problem. <laughs> so okay, that's better. So you see, um, Procreate makes a good or straight circle out of it, um, and then you can draw it or drag it into the right size. So. Um, for example, yeah, this is this is the tricky part. Just a second. Oh no. So 
So let's make it a little bit less large. See if that fits in there. Um, can raise this. Okay, it's a bit too large, I guess. So make it a little bit smaller, like this. And then raising the parts that I don't need. doesn't have to be 100% perfect all the time but um, this is uh, better than you would be able to draw this this round part with eyeballing it because eyeballing isometric round shapes is sometimes really extremely difficult and that's where what I do with almost all my um, round shapes so if it's if it lets or if it allows you to break it down to at least um, roughly something that is a circle like per per perfectly round circle then you can use this technique which is really makes your life very much easier Okay, still be behaving weird, weirdly. And then copy paste is another thing that uh, prevents you from going completely mad. Just copying pasting these round shapes wherever you see a possibility to to work with copy and paste. Very helpful. So I hope you guys had all a uh, good start into the new year. Um, if you if you want, let me know what your um, what your goals for this year are, or how you enter 2022. While well, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is happening with my brush here, it's really. Did not plan to restart the iPad live on stream to be honest.
So another example of copy and paste this shape here. So as you see, this is what I just mentioned a bit earlier. It's um, it's looking a little bit uh, geometric now and very uh, very stiff. Uh, this will loosen up later. You will see that. But I often have to tell this myself because uh, yeah, you know this. Um, it's just you have of course this feeling of. Um, uh, yeah, this 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 too stiff look yourself when you're you, when you're working on it, and then I just have to tell myself, okay, come on, uh, keep it up. It will be better in a bit when you add the details and add the more organic shapes. So. tricky to find the right distance between these window parts. So, and here we go with copy and paste again, of course. Makes sense for this window. Cool thing is that in Procreate you can also use this grid um, support on the selection tool, so if you um, oops, uh, if you copy and then draw the window, see that you can also uh, use the grid with, with drawing this.
So what I like about the the inspiration here is that this house has this um, this this large brick part at the bottom. So we have this this fine brick red brick part here, and then there is this this stone stone wall part that makes it look more rustic and more a little bit older and. Uh, I'm going to steal that for my own artwork as well. What I'm going to do here is um, I think I'm not going to use the lines, uh, the grid supports here, but I'm going to draw these by hand. So it will be a bit less straight and a little rough, just like these stones are, you know. All right, oh, there's one missing here. funny roof parts uh, and then I can have a look at more details on the on the left front part
Moin Aki. <lacht> Willkommen, willkommen. Oh yes, by the way, I'm German. So if anyone wants to talk to me in German, it's also allowed and I understand it. <laughs> if you didn't hear that already by my by my accent. This roof structure is a little bit weird, <laughs> but I, th I thought it would would look funny. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit funny to draw as well. Okay, I'm going to add some details to the this part now. Hey Lisa, nice to see you. Good to know you're tuning in on uh, YouTube as well as on Twitch. <laughs> How has your new year been so far?
things wrong. Hey Marian, thanks for coming in. Cheers to Romania then. And uh, thanks very much. deleted work of Procre. That's actually something I um, always was really afraid of because it is, I think it is quite easy to erase or to delete a file from Procreate. And I um, I'm sometimes when I um, shift some files from here and there to, to or to, to organize files into a folder, I am um, sometimes really think like oh fuck I could really could really happen that I press a wrong bu button just you know some muscle memory or whatever um, and uh, yeah if I hope it wasn't too much work that that you um, deleted I have to admit there is definitely quite some files where I only have the appropriate file on the iPad so I would lose my iPad or if it would break down the, the hard drive it would be completely um, corrupted or so. Um, yeah, it would be a problem for me, to be honest. I mean, uh, I usually export PSDs after I finish a project, especially when it's a client project. So the files are safe on, on in the cloud. Um, so I have the, the PSDs, but for my personal projects, I usually just have them on my iPad. Uh. So we're coming closer and closer to a very tricky part of the this artwork, which is the huge window, because uh, I mean, transparency, transparent objects are uh, often a challenge because you can see through them. <laughs> so um, I have a technique that works quite well with uh, for windows that I all already used for uh, other of these houses as well. I'm going to show you how I how I do it. And I hope it works well for this as it worked for other drawings before. Mandarita. Hello, hello. Cheers to Scotland. <laughs> oh man, it's so absolutely due that I go to Scotland again. I've been in the uh, in Edinburgh once, but it's been quite a while, and I loved it there. So um, hope to be able to go again after probably after COVID, maybe in two thousand thirty or so. <laughs> Now I'm laughing, but we all know that it's true.
Okay, something is a little bit off with this roof here. Gotta make some uh, calculations here. <laughs> so. Antanas, hello, nice to see you. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Also, also modular. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Um, thing is, uh, I'm completely new to streaming to YouTube and I uh, created that first stream, but then, um, oh, it's serious, hi. <laughs> so, uh, problem is, um, I started the stream and had some, some issues, some technical issues because one setting in my um, in my streaming file or in my streaming software wasn't really right. So I had to set that up again, but I couldn't um, use the old the old link, you know. So um, I promise I will do better next time. So this was just my starters, little starters fuck up with the link. Um, It's really stupid because I couldn't also couldn't add any kind of information to the to the old link that there's a new one. <laughs> it was a bit uh, was a bit annoying. Oh, Manolis, hey, <laughs> thanks for coming in. Good old, good to see some um, some regular stream fa um, Twitch faces here. That's great. Yeah, actually, uh, I mean, you know, you know me from Twitch. You know that I had to I had a big struggle with technical issues there, and actually, it started um, started with something like that again today when I wanted to um, kick off the stream. But it was just a little setting. So maybe. I don't know, but maybe there's a similar setting for Twitch as well, so I can get Twitch going again as um, uh, too. But I'm not sure. It's all uh, it's all a bit confusing. All the platforms. Uh, difficult to decide for a strategy, to be honest. is the um, Tony Montana brush. It's actually, you're absolutely right. It's from the plastic brush pack. So yes. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Pen is still behaving in a weird way. It's crazy. I don't know. Sometimes it just does completely weird things. It's funny that I'm drawing for weeks and it, it's all good. And then I'm go, I'll go live on stream. And <laughs> first thing is that happens is that my brush is not doing what I want. Um, but my Apple Pencil fell down yesterday. So probably it's broken again. That would be the second um, broken Apple Pen. Um, although the other one was good for... Uh, for two and a half years or so, so it's not that the apple pens don't break very fast. It's just me throwing them around here in the in my my office all the time. stream interfering with the brush yeah but apart from that it's um uh, like coming back to your question um i had this drop frames issue before and when i started today uh i had that again and i was really going completely mental about this because i thought uh, not please please not the same as i had before with twitch but then i just saw that there was a network setting in obs that um i didn't click and um, I did that and it worked well, so. Um, it's now it's perfectly stable, so I guess that was the problem. Question is if there's on Twitch, if there's a similar option, you know, so probably I just needed to switch something and uh, it would work on Twitch as well, but. I have absolutely no clue. There's some other reasons I wanted to uh, try YouTube anyway. So I mentioned it uh, in the beginning already. It's the fact that it's um, much more comfortable to rewatch the, the videos here because you don't need a Twitch account. Everyone can just um, like it's automatically there after the stream. I don't have to download the file, which is, by the way, for three to four hours streaming, it's a really huge file you have to download and then upload to YouTube and put in all the all the little um, information. And for here, it's just streaming. And when you you're done with the stream, you, you have just have a nice. Um, a nice live drawing vi video that everyone can just watch on YouTube, which is, which I think is cool. It's probably a little bit. I I don't know if if I keep up using Twitch at all. Uh, it would be a little bit of a shame because I built my audience there for a while quite quite well. But another reason is that um, I. That building that audience was much much harder on Twitch in the la last month. So um, uh, I don't know if they changed something on the algorithm or so, or if people go out more now that uh, we're not so much in lockdown anymore. But um, yeah, it would be a little bit of a shame to have built that audience and now throw it all away and <laughs> move over to the next platform. <laughs> but We'll see, we'll see. One of my New Year's rules or goals is that I don't want to care about this whole social media topic so much anymore, like being more relaxed with it. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm 
I've always been a very open person to trying new plat platforms, new things in general. And um, it's, it's, it's okay to just see and watch how it develops and just keep up the work and we'll see. But dealing too much with this whole social media topic can really drag it down. I think it's really, it can get depressive. I'm not a depressive person, but um, it can still really annoy you and um, I would say make you lose the focus to your main, uh, to what you mainly want to do, in that, which is creating art and um, pushing your career in art, which for which social media is a is an important um, piece of puzzle, but yeah, not the most important. Also really started to um, love using Twitter, which is, it was quite new to me um, almost ex exactly a year ago. I mean, I, I had a Twitter account, but like 300 followers or so and uh, not using it really with a lot of passion, <laughs> but um, started to love it really because you, you have so much more meaningful conversations there with other artists and um, it's just really fun to use now. Although you have to, you have to try to uh, ignore all the hate and um, like the, Basically, I just um, unfollowed every politically motivated account on Twitter to make it usable again for me. So basically, you could say that I, I completely left my, my political bubble there because it's just so full of negativity and hate. And yeah, you know, you, you know all the reasons why people uh, hate t Twitter. I mean, there's a lot of people who hate Twitter just because because of this shit going on but if you if you manage to join a more positive bubble um it can be really fun uh youtube ui is not as encouraging for you to text oh, that's okay that's not so good that's not what i want of course i want you guys to interact with me <laughs> um I don't know. I can't. I can't tell you, but it's interesting to. I mean, the, the the thing with Twitch is, there is a lot of like Twitch is a lot about encouraging people to interact. Um, in general, you know, um, the whole thing with Twitch, like this, these these funny things you can include into into your streams. Um, are there to to make your viewers interact with with you and your stream so um i think twitch is probably just really good at um yeah it, it, it giving you this this feeling that it's 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 fun to interact and to use the chat for example the the these these points these funny points that you can spend for um for extras um it's a, yeah, it's a little bit sad that it, this is not um, available here on YouTube. Um, and stuff like that. I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of examples for um, like t 
to, to, to you're able to control these these um, alerts and you can basically include a lot of weird and fun and humoristic uh, elements there yeah Oh yeah, we yeah, we could do that, of course. Yeah, I want I don't I'm a little bit hesitant to say that I don't want to stream on Twitch anymore at all. It's it's um would be stupid to just completely drop it. Um I'm just looking for the right right option here. Maybe I'm just in the end coming back to Twitch. Um I also was annoyed by my own streaming schedule so that I couldn't like keep my, my schedule to uh, two streams a week, which was for uh, a certain period of time was fine. But um, in the end, it just turned out that it was too exhausting for me. And um, yeah, you, you can, I, I was, was completely fine with doing that for a couple of weeks, but then like more work came in and then I had to spend more time with, on projects that I couldn't show on stream. Then there was summer and you, you were going out more and stuff like that. Um, so I think with a little adjusted approach to the whole Twitch thing, I could probably imagine going back there as well. Um, it's just for now, it's just finding the best option. Um, and we'll see. But yeah, it's a good idea to have uh, spend your points, <laughs> a spend your points stream. I could um, add some fun extras there that cost a lot of points, but I don't know. I'm 
putting on some costumes or so. <laughs> Oh, you can reply to people's messages. Is that right? Okay, that's, yeah, that's not so cool. That's right. Yeah, I think probably is, YouTube is not putting enough work into this whole streaming thing. I think they could probably do better, but um, I'm not sure if they, they focus on that very much, you know? One thing I'm really a bit sad about is that the uh, streaming or the, the hangouts on Discord didn't attract a lot of people so far because I, I tried it a couple of times. I mean, it, you could, I could definitely um, do that more often and to, to establish it more. Um, so that's for sure something that, that would help. But um, I felt like they were wasn't so much interest in, in coming onto these um, onto these these hangouts there um, although I think it's really it's, it's, it's something nice because you can um, it's it's the only way I know where you can like come on stage and and talk uh, with with uh, voice and voice to me and um, I love, for example, I love hanging out with friends on Discord to just have like an artist, artist hangout and then um, talk a little bit um, because it's much, much easier. You just on voice and not have to read messages and reply to them. <laughs> but yeah, it seems like it's not so popular. Maybe some people are just shy and don't want to. Um, don't want to come on voice or so. Middle is you did, by the way. That was uh, was good. Oh, you can tag people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's. At least one option. So I'm going to add um, the inner part of the building here. Yeah, I know there's a lot of parts missing here, like these um, these windows here, these these windows here, and like some some of these brick structures I want to draw in there. But I want to focus on these. Uh, the, the, that inner building, what you can see behind the window for a while. And what I do first is very, very important to set up a new layer. So I have one for the inner and one for the other part. And then I'm, I'm for now I'm ignoring the overlapping uh, elements. I think there's right now there's only this this part that is overlapping um, I'm going to erase that later or going to adjust that later it's much easier for me to just draw draw over it for now Imagine that there's probably this is an old industrial house that is now occupied by um, by creatives or maybe maybe it's a little bit gentr gentrified as well <laughs> and is now um, is now used by a startup or so so like 
what you what you have in reality as well of course these kind of kinds of buildings probably they ripped out the a part of the house and made this glass a huge glass facade I mean I'm not I'm not always uh, trying to find stories behind these buildings uh, sometimes they don't make any sense at all <laughs> they were real but um, for this one I had kind of this thing in my mind Wow, yeah, I know um, Chris Ware, sure, yeah, he's he's amazing. Um, actually, funny thing is that I didn't know his work bef um, before I started to do these isometric drawings myself. Um, but I think someone else uh, pointed me towards him and said, hey, like, hey, look, um, his work is like, ha has similar vibes. And yeah, it's... Um, it's really cool. I think it's it's uh, we have different styles that um, create like we we both work a lot with details and create this very um, yeah the, the create artworks that tell the, tell stories through these details. You know, so I think that's what he's really a master in, and we we are we are. I definitely can learn from him because it's so um, it's just so great how 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 he tells these stories within his his um, images so yeah yeah By the way, completely random, but uh, I got a new microphone, so um, I hope the, the audio quality is good. I realized that the audio quality on some of my streams wasn't really good because uh, it was not so easy to set up the microphone in a good way and it was a little bit weird. Uh, this should be much better now. Maybe I should try to uh, hit up Chris for a collab or so. <laughs> it would be would be fun to see what we could uh, create together. I mean, if 
question is if the if the styles are in the end not really a bit too similar but uh, it would be cool to work on something together maybe i should ask him if he um he's up for creating a curious cabin <laughs> Actually, want to um, want to ask a couple of artists if they want to um, create their own for the collection. Um, especially, I think uh, it's something that I could work um, uh, work on with three D artists because I love isometric art in three D as well and something I don't do and so it would be cool for a color because the style would be very diff diff different but still um, have my vibes if I if I create a concept and the 3d 3d artist builds it in their style but it's just in the future first comes uh, finishing this one and then the uh, the release of the first drop on Thursday of course and just have to see how it goes and if the project is successful, uh, that color thing is something I probably focus on afterwards. Yeah, giving them houses in my neighborhood, exactly. <laughs> Didn't notice the difference. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, um, I maybe I, maybe it's just my, myself. Um, Thinking that I didn't sound re really cool. Cool. Uh, I mean, you know how it is to listen to your own voice. Um, it's just something most people don't really like, and uh, probably it was just like a, I thought that I was sounding not so good. So, what do you do? <laughs> you buy a new microphone, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. I think I'm going to do that. Um, I think I'm definitely going to show the the houses. Um, all the houses uh, next to each other. I actually, I made, uh, just think if I have that somewhere. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't, but I'm going to share it um, for sure. Um, it's, it's, the cool thing is that the, the houses are all on the same basic um, platform. This is the platform that I um, copied for each new artwork so I could, could put the, the the next one on the same um, tile so if you arrange the tiles uh, it's, it's absolutely possible to um, yeah to put them next to each other it's just something that I thought would be cool to keep the um, to keep the collection more consistent you know Oh, that's cool. That's uh, I love to hear that, man. Uh, thanks for for the compliment. It's really uh, it sounds a bit cheesy, but it's really um, something I, I hear or I love to hear the most is just when people tell me that I'm I was able to inspire them because it's uh, for me it's also an important part of my way of becoming an artist is to be inspired by um, by other artists and I was lucky enough to have the chance to talk to a couple other artists that inspired me um, especially actually through the NFT space in the last uh, last month um, uh, it created a lot of opportunities for me to to talk to people that I admire for quite a while um, and yeah it's nice so thanks very much my pencil is doing weird stuff again. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What's that? That's weird. That's really... This, never did this before. Okay. Yeah, well... It's alive.
So, uh, Joao, what's the, the project you've been talking about, by the way? Uh, so feel free to, to share some info if you can already. Be nice. Sounds like something isometric, even the, <laughs> the inspiration by, um, uh, by Chris. So. It's also that something that I can, I can really recommend to, um, if you, this is of interest for, for you to, to create art, um, this, with this isometric perspective, <clears throat> I can really recommend to, um, look into it because I feel like there's a huge rise in demand for isometric art for whatever reason. I can't, I can't tell you what, what the reason is, but, um, something that people seem to love lately and I get a lot of requests for um, for asymmetric drawings especially these houses uh, I, I even really had to to turn down a lot of offers because I don't want to overdo this I don't want to be an artist who only draws houses anymore you know and I want to keep the ideas for for the curious cabins project for example and don't want to um, uh, you know, waste waste is the wrong word, but I want to um, use ideas I already have on other projects that I, I need to have a clear line between the curious cabins and other projects. You know, it, it shouldn't become too dif um, too similar. Um, so yeah, I, I had to turn down a lot of offers there, but it seems like uh, there's some serious interest in this kind of um this kind of storytelling this kind of visuality which is great so please don't copy my stuff <laughs> but maybe you want to try it yourself and maybe it's working for you too Okay, so uh, now you see I have the inner part of the building and um, it looks a bit weird now. Um, let me just merge this layer and this layer. Um, the cool thing is now that, that when I put color between the outer and the inner layer like this, let's say I'm going to color uh, I don't know uh, this part here see I'm just coloring over the inner layer can leave this just out the window here and then later I go and color the inner part can just fill this and I have the two separated. And that makes it much easier to work uh, on this, this kind of layering. But it looks a bit strange now. <laughs> hey, Raphael, what's up? Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Hope you have a good day. Oh, that's a cool idea, matching or, or combining 3D with um, with hand drawing or with, uh, hand drawn elements. That's cool. That usually, from what I saw so far in, in this direction, it usually creates a really unique style. So definitely a good way to um, yeah, to create a distinctive visuality, I guess. 
So what's missing? The windows here. Thick, thick brick framings. Yeah, the color palette I just had in there was not <laughs> what I have in mind here. It was just an example. But I'll show you in a bit what, um, what colors I have in my mind. <laughs> and we'll see if that works. I think obviously some, probably some rust Rusty red brick. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to go just around the whole drawing and uh, we're going to add some details here and there, just some structures, textures to some parts. 
So I'm really going over the, the, the image or over the drawing again and, and again and again because I made the experience that this helps me to find the right level of detail because that's a question by the way I, I'm getting really really often is like how do you know when to stop adding details um what's the right amount of details i need for my drawing and it's um there's no rule to it but something that helps me is just to really um not focus on one area of the of the drawing too much for 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 a while but to uh like, okay, now I'm good for now with the rate of detail in here, this area. Now I'll go, for example, here and add some, some more stones here to that rough brick wall. I mean, this it's all, it also depends on what kind of surface you have, of course. For this rough stone wall, it absolutely makes sense to, to add... Um, more details to more uh, clean surface it's, um, that should be obvious but but after a while they, when I'm go I'm going over and over the whole scene I'm coming to a point where I think okay that's enough and that's guess that's a lot of experience but this way you won't like have one area full of details and then realize oh shit uh, there's way too many details in here uh, I need to go back again and, and um, delete some of my strokes Stop, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, the ultimate reason to stop adding details is definitely when you die. <laughs> yeah. But let's focus on making art and still being able to do something with it. <laughs> and not, not dying before. <laughs> Right, uh, so a little bit of hatching here and there, not too much, but just uh, this is, by the way, a nice for me and personally a nice way to add details and in areas where you have a not so structured surface. But
<clears throat> same for the interior <laughs> Stephanie or Stephanie, <laughs> depending on where you're from. Yes, I'm fine. Uh, how are you? Thanks for tuning in today. me how I am and you see that I'm drawing it's 99% chance that I'm in a good mood Hey Fanny, how's it going? So, I think I'm good to head over to colors. Mm. Let's uh, start with the the outside walls. Um, I already put in two colors here very very randomly. I <laughs> uh, did that when doing the scribble because I wanted to try um, this rusty red brick wall color. Um, I think this is not so perfect though because I guess brick wall is probably a little bit more yellow like this so let's let's try let's start with that let's see if it works mm. 
Uh, too yellow for my taste. That's better. I mean, it doesn't have to be realistic, but at least I want to give this impression of this, this brick wall, so at least the direction should be um, should be working. And also have a look at the, my inspiration, this photo. It looks like there. I also like this. Actually, I really love the building here in this picture. So I'm probably even going to pick these white paint applications. I don't know what exactly that is, to be honest. I guess it's paint. Um, I think I'm probably even going to take that into... Uh, here as well. Oh, damn it, picked the wrong layer. Thank God for <laughs> this function. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, once again. Maybe a little bit different. Uh, no, I'm usually actually on um on twitch i used to be on twitch but i wanted to try youtube uh, for the first time um so i uh i'm here for the first time today but have been streaming to twitch for more than a year actually um and my i think my my username on Twitch, I think it's. Let me just have a look. Oh, yeah, that's me. Perfect. Uh, here's my Twitch profile if you want to check it out. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, just felt like trying YouTube, see. How streaming goes here, if there's any differences. Um, there's some pros and cons, as always. <laughs> but um, I think the coolest thing on, on YouTube is that it's uh, easy to just push the video um, into your profile after you st you've been you st you've finished streaming because I think it's a nice advantage for um, subscribers to be able to rewatch stream afterwards, um, which is possible on Twitch too, but it's easier to manage here. So, yeah, I like the color. So, and the blue spot in here uh, is there for a reason because I had the idea to go with a complementary color as nice color contrast so to not make it look very very um, very very focused on one color range like this red and yellow but to create a nice striking contrast uh, and the complementary color to this would now be in this area here um, which is I think something that could work really nice for example if I go for this copper copper green roofs and um, do the same like add the a similar color to the um, to the bushes and trees Well, that's um, maybe a little bit too harsh. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew I... Uh, <laughs> I was a bit confused as well because I thought, okay, I know that username. Uh, so I thought you've been watching on Twitch as well, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> um, yes, yes. Yeah, then... Um, then yes, it's just... Uh, trying something else today. If you have a preference or if you if you like Twitch better, let me know. It's I'm, I mean I'm thank, thankful for for every uh, input on this. Yeah, that um, Gmail thing is also annoying me. Um, I'm not sure how how this is. I, I think there's no real handle on YouTube, right? I mean, you have you you connected. Uh, um, your your Gmail address, and then you have a name. A, an account name but I'm not sure I think there's no such thing as an handle yeah, it's a bit confusing as well for me Maybe I need to just uh, do it one week YouTube, one week uh, Twitch or so. <laughs> Although I don't know if that makes if that makes any sense at all. I think that's all only confusing people in the end. Thanks, Fanny. You got you, but you're enjoying the process. It's also nice for me to to share it and um, talk about it while while doing it. It's uh, actually it's it's fun because it's um, you you're kind of learning something yourself when you try to explain what you do and when you're showing your process because you um, you analyze and question your own process more which is I think is cool because um, it's 
always a nice ability to be able to explain why you do a certain step or uh, what the thought is behind um, behind a part of your process or decision. So I learned that I really um, make personally make use of these streams as well. So coming close to the point where I usually try to decide if I want to go with um, with the color palette that I chose, um, or if I need to do any adjustments. Basically, I'm happy with this, but I think there's it could be more on point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the color balance tool, see if I can um, turn things into a certain direction a little bit. <laughs> it's always a little bit trial and error to be honest and make the colors align a little bit more a little bit better see the difference Basically what I just did with the color, uh, this, this kind of color grading or color correction is um, that I added basically a bit more uh, blue or um, adjusted the, the whole color range more into blue in total. Um, so it's not so complimentary <laughs> as before. <laughs> But it is um, resonating, in my opinion, it's resonating a little bit better than before. So that's just a little adjustment. You can, of course, do this um, in the end. So, but um, I think it's also a good idea to try it in, in between doing the colors because now I have some kind of new starting point where I can um, I can go from and then select colors for the other elements, which is also helpful for me. Yeah, Medolis or Antanas. <laughs> um, thanks for for um, chatting and happy lurking. <laughs> yeah, lo-fi artists. Um, I never really got to understand where the, the, the border between lo-fi and non-lo-fi <laughs> non artists. Uh, I, I'm struggling with 
kind of defining the the, the boundaries of that um, of that term. But yeah, I, I mean, I know what you mean by lo-fi art, and, and yes, I agree. It's um, something I also enjoy doing a lot. Uh, it's just really popular as well, so you can really um, get the attention of a lot of people by um, doing this kind of art. Also, my Japanese uh, street drawings are really super popular. It's really something I should um, should work on again if I had more time. But I will definitely do that. Something I could also do in stream, to be honest. Uh, maybe next time. Okay, guys, so I'm going to have a quick break. Ooh, toilet, getting something to drink, pause, and then uh, I'll move on to the inner part of the building. And also, um, we're going to have a look at the shadows, uh, which will be fun as well. <laughs> so, uh, don't run away, I'll be back in two minutes.
and ready to do, ready to go again. <laughs> Let me just find my bottle opener. There we go. Cheers. Oh, cool, funny. Your um, your granny is from Japan. That's cool. And you want to um, order the prints? Oh, that would be that would be uh, fantastic, of course. Um, you want to order the whole uh, pack? Um, drop me a message before so I can send you um, a discount. If you want to order three of them, I, I'm I'm good with uh, giving you some percentage off, of course. So where were we? Coloring, of course. Um, just going to... Okay. So for the inner part, I'm going to use a um, different layer, of course. And I'm going to try to make use of the these teal blue colors here. Maybe adding a little bit more green, just a little bit <clears throat> for the plants here.
Hmm, not so easy to find a, the right color for the wall here. <laughs> okay, this one works for now. Let's just see, I need to add a couple outlines here. Or I just make them walls here, brick red. <laughs> it turns everything quite red then. No, oh, that looks weird.
So I think I need to drop one of these colors, either the more yellow or the more blue directions, because... Or the green. <laughs> because I think it's a bit too colorful in general. It's, um... So my typical way of coloring usually is a little bit more limited. <clears throat> And I think I need to kind of find a way to drop one of these colors so it's more narrowed down. The question is how and what color. Um, to go. to match something with the brick red, to be honest. Challenging color.
Babe Star, cheers. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, um, that's right. It's been a while. <laughs> um, no, I didn't didn't quit streaming on Twitch. Um, I just want to um, try and, and find out about other options for streaming. So um, I'm I'm not giving <laughs> given up um, being live on on Twitch. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I've tried to stream on, on um, Discord a bit, to, so use the Discord voice chat as kind of a streaming platform. And now for the first time I'm trying YouTube. And I just want to find out if this would be a better option compared to Twitch. Actually, right now I'm, I'm really not sure because both platforms have their pros and cons. So it's, I mean, it's it's logical that it is it is this way. I think the community community features on Twitch are much better than here. Um, there's other stuff that is working better uh, here. So it's yeah, it's it's difficult. <clears throat> I think I should just start my own streaming platform. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> and, and just. Um, the plastic streaming platform. No, um, I don't know. It's uh, just gotta make a pro as pro and con list probably, and decide what should be um, my main streaming platform in the future. I think this needs another round of color balancing. Maybe later, I'm not sure. But I like this contrast between the red and the green and this also, I think I'm been able to kick out the blue quite good um, but still a little bit noisy a little bit okay this is very much happening here so no any difference to before uh, okay okay that was not so helpful yeah I guess it's um, if you if you're coming from a strategic kind of um, direction and say okay what makes most sense it's of course Focusing on on one platform and um, try to to be as um, as successful as possible there. Um, although I'm I'm just a fan of trying new stuff and finding new ways, um, but of course I have to admit there's also the reason that Twitch um, was behaving weirdly on the technical side. And also that uh, my average viewers got down more and more, so I um, there was also a little incentive from that direction to try a couple of new options because it you yeah you feel like it's you need to change something when suddenly your viewer numbers go down like 
like really heavily, you know. Um, I think it's not my content. Uh, I hope it's not my content, <laughs> of course. So I mean, it's it's. Um, something you you have to hope because if it's your content um, that would be bad <laughs> but um, I think something on the platform changed somehow I don't know some algorithm again probably <laughs> bad bad algorithms So the magic thing I cannot do with this inner room to make it look like there's a glass front here and, and windows there, that's the cool thing now, is when I add another layer here in between and put in bright color you see this is kind of the the glass surface I have now here and um, I can play around with that like I can put it to less um, I, I can change the opacity um, I can play around with uh, blending modes here and see if I find something that works and looks like um, like glass so usually what works quite good is the hard light because it um, shuts down the the outlines quite well so, and then probably something like a little less opacity with it of course you can change for example you add a mask um, and draw on that mask you can create some kind of gradient so to add more complexity to the to that uh, surface in some parts Instagram doesn't help <laughs> a lot of people right now, right? So it's just really Instagram is not not a good way to to grow right now, actually, which is annoying. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there are some people who have good interaction rates and good reach, but it, the most of the people I know um, have problems, and it doesn't matter if they have 
100k followers or just a thousand it's it's um doesn't matter it, it it's it's broken for everyone and i feel like i don't know i'm really very very unsure if this will ever come back to be honest because and see meta <laughs> making any changes to that is completely wicked strange fucked up company with that strange ceo they have um so if it's it's really difficult i mean i get a, c a couple of questions every every now and then from people who want to start on instagram and um it's hard to recommend something i i think it's not good to completely ignore instagram the time will come but i'm sure about that but probably not now um but i would recommend to not put too much um, effort into it right now because it's not just not worth it just doesn't reward your your work you can, you you putting into it yeah movement will be will be good right <laughs> um reddit is a, yeah reddit is a nice a nice option as well um definitely um i mean reddit isn't reddit is very very strict with self promo in in a lot of um <clears throat> in a lot of uh, subreddits subreddits but um i think it's it's a nice option to show your work and um, i also get a lot of new instagram followers through reddit for example just for, by posting my art there Okay, so let's go um, for for the shadows next, because there isn't so much time left, and I wanted to want to uh, go over to the shadows before I um, before I'm done streaming. So here's what I usually do, new layer, multiply, and then I just um, pick some gray and draw shadows. <laughs> second um yeah reels did work for a while for me but uh actually they are now not really um pushing pushing my reach anymore it's it's really weird um for some time reels did really good but um i guess instagram isn't pushing them anymore uh, that, that hard anymore so yeah still see some of them go viral and i think it's the chances are probably higher to um to have some viral reach through uh, um, through reels. Maybe maybe there's a higher chance, but it's far from what they used to uh, give you a couple of months ago, which was really crazy. At some points, I had really crazy reach through uh, through reels.
So I'm creating a big um, part to fill now with the shadow. Voila. <laughs> It's always kind of satisf satisfying to feel it afterwards. Yeah, exactly, uh, Joao, that's right. Um, I'm usually picking two kinds of subreddits. First is art related, which is of course um, kind of logical because um, when you want to post art, you um, you use an art related uh, subreddit like, for example, like um, um, digital art, um, drawing, the art subreddit is really a bunch of idiots uh, who they have as mo moderators, to be honest. But you can still try to post it there. Uh, but the art reddit is really extremely elitist and very, very weird, to be honest. It's, it's I don't like the people there, but you can try. And um, there's some others like um, um, yeah, Procreate. Uh, Joao mentioned that. Uh, and then there's the topic related ones um, that, that you can pick from what you, you you're drawing for example like um, yeah architecture related is something something asymmetric uh, there's also some uh, one for asymmetric art I think um, and then there's um, for example I've been building uh, drawing a building that looked like uh, a French building so I've been posting it to the um, Paris, like a Parisian building, and it, I, I posted it to the Paris and Fran Fran France, France <laughs> uh, subreddit, and um, it went really well. And yeah, things like that. Cyberpunk um, is is also one I'm posting re regularly too. And I mean, the chances that your um, that your post is going off is, is aren't super high as well but um it um, works quite often for me Just gotta make sure that you're not self-promoting your stuff too obviously because a lot of people on Reddit don't like that. So putting or or like farming followers for Instagram too obviously is um, it's not what what people like to see there, uh, which is I think which which is completely understandable and quite more a good. Um, attribute of, of Reddit, to be honest, because uh, shilling work is um, not happening that much there. if I should put uh, shadows in here but it gets so dark um, so I should soften it up a little bit <clears throat> oh, no <laughs> no
Yeah, uh, that's uh, something that works really cool is um, when you post your work to channels that are not used to um, people posting art. You know, for example, the people in the Paris subreddit, they usually do not see so many artists posting um, their Paris related art there. Although probably for something like Paris, they, they're probably more used to it actually. But uh, you know what I mean? I mean uh, and it's it's usually people re react really positive to when they see their uh, like their hobby or their um, professional topic um, interpreted by artists that's something people yeah usually um, really like I mean you always have these kind of people who then say hey um, <laughs> you did something wrong like uh, Joao with your uh, Insects. I mean, I could imagine that there were some people on Reddit saying that the that that specific insect you made uh, isn't 100% correct. Or so you always have these kind of people. Um, I posted my houses to architecture, and there were of course some people who were like, "Okay, this house can't exist in reality." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's the reason why I why I um, made a piece of art from it because it can't exist in reality, so we can enjoy it." as a piece of art but um that's reddit is also platform for a lot of nitpickers <laughs> i find it quite amusing to be honest it's uh it's fun that it's always these kind of people uh, being active there Yeah, best, uh, thanks for coming in today. Uh, have a good day. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, if they're they're um, correcting you in a um, in a constructive way, it's really nice. Um, definitely. All right, guys, I think I'm uh, going to call it a day for the stream because um, I have shown you almost the whole process. It's only uh, details coming now, um, which is also another 
I don't know, probably another hour of work, but I'm going to do that later or tomorrow or so, um, because I have a little bit of extra time. <laughs> uh, collection is dropping on Thursday. So if you're interested, just interested follow along on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, um, where I'm going to post updates on the collection. And then on Thursday, 8 p.m. European time is the day for uh, the, the time for the drop and i'm very excited about that yeah so thanks for for um attending to my first youtube stream uh, i'm not sure how to proceed with my streaming action but we'll see about that uh i'm going to keep you updated on that as well of course um and i'm going to post the video here on youtube so it's it's um always there to re-watch of course and I'm going to post the finished artwork on all the platforms as well once it's done so yeah all right if you have any questions that don't come to to your mind now just drop them on discord for example and uh, I'll be there helping you out all right guys have a good Monday have a good week and see you soon. Bye-bye.